So serendipitous chance. We have Ben McKenzie who played Jim Gordon in the TV series Gotham. Uh, he's here playing Bruce Wayne in the animated Batman Year One. Lieutenant Jim Gordon, as he is now, uh, a, a good cop cast away to, to Gotham for penance for um, working with IA to uh, get rid of to uh, rat on a crooked cop. You know, and cops are close in it, so it's not it's frowned upon. So his punishment for being a good cop is working now for Gotham. Uh, and now he finds himself in a world of other seedy cops who are in the pocket of villainous or potentially villainous people or, or corrupt cops uh, finding their own way. Bruce Wayne comes in 18 years since the death of his family. Uh, he's now ready um, for 14 years. He's been training abroad to become the Batman. The idea of the Batman and how he got to the at, that the symbol and what it means and bringing fear to others is you see how he gets to that antithesis of that character in this movie, like how the idea uh, and how it's been synthesized to become the bat and how he's able to use that fear and use what he's been learning and applying it to Gotham and what it was, what it took for him to get to that next level. And that's what this movie this animated movie shows you. And it connects itself you can't connect it, connect it to being the prequel to the Batman with Robert Patterson. Help fill in the gaps of how and why Gordon and the Batman are, are willing to stick it out amongst a crowd of hostile police forces, you know, because they're, they're doing their job and butting heads and try to avoid butting heads with the law enforcement of Gotham in the Batman. And this kind of gives you this shows you the reason why Gordon trusts him and is willing to stick his neck out for the Batman amongst the tide of unpopular opinion. And I think if you look at it like that, then this works really, really well because you can't really tell that story in its mat. Well, you know, you can tell it, you can tell that story, but it's probably easier just to take it from this animation thing as the, as your base and then going from there and telling the story that, that they gave, you know, uh, and it works that way too. So, in order to maintain his own safety and for his wife and himself, um, he has to keep quiet. But he does not change or break his way of being a good man. And with the social media and people and the news media uh, seeing how good he, seeing this uh, being a, a, a pillar of society, um, the, villain, the the corrupt cops can't really touch him because he's doing everything by the book. And it, show, and it gives confidence in the GDP by doing his job. So it's a double-edged sword because the villains can't, I mean, the cops who are corrupt know he's a good man. In a sense, they kind of respect that, but they really hate him. But they can't touch him because he is giving them a positive shine in society. So um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting dichotomy of how that works. Uh, now, Bruce Wayne is entering he's returning back from training abroad whether it's being uh being a, a ninja or whatever it is he's been training uh, most likely that's the case now he's now at the point now he hasn't figured out that he's the batman but this is him coming to that synthesis or um where he or that antithesis of finding the bat that crashes through his house and realizing realizing this is the fear he wants to impose onto others that gave him that extra edge the extra edge so people will fear him and not uh, and pause when he comes into a scene. And the dramatics of the fog and the darkness is an added bonus of element that he can integrate that with the fear he puts on to the villains that he fights in Gotham. The animated movie works without Selena Kyle. It's just they wanted to put somebody in it where they would slightly meet and, you know, tendentially meet in periods uh, as he becomes uh, the Batman. But for the sake of simplicity, I'd say Batman Year One in its complete storyline works well to complement the Batman. Uh, shows you the kind of character uh, Gordon is, how tough he really is, how smart he really is, and why he just hasn't gone after um, the Batman himself or Bruce Wayne or like just kind of gives you that understanding of where he is like what 
where he where his placement is in this world and where he stands with the Batman and why he is set up the way he is to work with the Batman, willing to work with Batman, even though it's unconventional and unpopular. And uh, because year two or the Batman starts off with him coming into a crime scene from the Riddler. And that's what you see in the trailer for the Batman. And so if it's a prerequisite for that, then it works really, really well. I recommend highly to see Batman year one uh, for going the scenes of Catwoman and just taking it as it is. It, it does sort of flow itself because I have to believe what you're seeing in the Batman year one is somewhat canon and it kind of filtrates itself into this, into the, into the live action movie. And it works both ways. Uh, he's being into the mode of being the darkness, being the, the night. And I think that, that darkness um he's losing himself in that darkness which is which is why i think um the whole point of the batman was him um being the dark knight but also embracing the light being this being the darkness but being in that darkness being a beacon of light for gotham and that was the theme one of the major themes or lessons learned from uh the batman so uh, they do go hand in hand. I think it's a, a beautiful um, balance between the two. Uh, and it is a recommend. I'd say if you can watch that movie and then watch The Batman, um, they are complementary. And I think both are canon in many regards to the source material. Liberties are taken, obviously, but it's really, really good. So with that, I am your host, Ray. We'll talk to you later.